Welcome to the regular meeting of the Parks Recreation Community Services of May 7th. May we please have a re roll call? Commissioner Khan? Here. Rob Fogel? Here. Sharkey? Here. Zinania? Here. Ward? Here. Okay, let's see our first item. The agenda. <laughs> Go ahead, introduction. The agenda for the May 7th, 2008 meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall and on the City of Glendale website on Friday, May 2nd, 2008 at 1 p.m. Okay, and first introductions? Uh, under introductions and presentations is 2A, Don Trout, lifelong learning instructor. And at this time, I'd like to invite Monique Herrera up to the podium. Uh, Don was a longtime instructor here with the city, and he's no longer able to teach on, on behalf of the city, so Monique is here to mm. pay a little tribute to him. I have to say, he uh, started when I started, so I wanted to do this and ask Brittany and George if it would be okay. So let me just give you a brief, a brief background about Don. Um, Don earned a, de a degree in fine art from uh, the University of Kansas in the 50s, and then he was drafted to war. Um, when he came back from war, he ended up getting a job in Lockheed, where he served as a technical illustrator, a commercial artist, and as an art director of an in-house art group. Um, he then had an early retirement and he came to Brown Studios. I actually started as a part-time uh, facility attendant. At the time it was a different title, but Don was there. And I have to tell you that he is a phenomenal artist. You'll walk in and you just, it takes your breath away. <clears throat> um, one of the things that we all loved about Don is that we called his class on Friday the Lunch Bunch. I'm not kidding. When you walk in on Friday, they're all sitting around. We put two eight-foot tables together, and they're all sitting around eating lunch for hour, hour and a half, two hours. It doesn't matter. Then they get up and they paint. They go back, and it's just a really nice class. They invite us to come in, all of my staff. Um, they give us food. They have parties. It's, it's not so much an instructional class anymore because most of the artists in the class are very well trained, um, but we do really miss Don. Uh, what happened with John is <clears throat> his wife became seriously ill, and he lives in Canyon Country, and he would bring her to class so he could help take care of her, but then it just got to be too much for him, and uh, he didn't feel comfortable leaving her at home. Uh, we tried everything possible to get him to stay. He was very, very, very sad. He wrote us all letters, and everybody was crying that day, all of the students. We were talking about this last week. They were still crying, literally in tears. Um, Don always used to tell me that he used to feel that it was a privilege for him to be teaching at Brown, and he felt it wasn't even fair that he was getting paid to be there. He said the space was beautiful, the lighting was great. So um, I just wanted to just take a moment to appreciate him and everything he's done. Over the years, he's taught hundreds of students. Most of them have been there since 1991. So all of his students, they take pride in the facility, they take pride in the program, and um, what we've decided is, he thought we'd find another teacher to replace his slot, but they want to still take the class as a workshop because they won't have their lunch bunch if we have another teacher. So uh, we're going to continue to do that. But I just wanted to come up and just give my appreciation to him for all the things he's done for our program. He's a very nice man. He's very, very sadly missed. So I just and unfortunately, he wasn't able to be here today because mm -hmm. his wife is not doing so well. Uh, so Monique and myself, we will be... Normally, we would have presented a certificate to him today, but uh, since he's not here today, we will make sure that we forward that along to him. But we wanted to at least let the public know and let him know how much our department appreciated all that he had done for us. So. Great. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much in letting us know. And I know that, uh, you know, the commission here is really appreciative of having good help and good instructors maybe you know some of his art can be used up there as an example definitely. for the future definitely uh, i'm going to go ahead and order him a copy of the the commission meeting today just so he could see it since he doesn't live here so i'll let him know that good That's recognition a, any other i'm sorry yeah. that was a beautiful tribute thank you so a lot much. about you too he's one of my favorites thank you very much it's a very lucky person thank you Got so many people that care about him so much. Oh, they're, they're devastated. Uh, I think they're still going to keep visiting him. And oh, we all loved his wife. She would come. She's oh. such a nice woman, too. So uh, we keep in touch with him, and uh, hopefully he'll at least come for the end of the session parties that we have in the classes. Oh, I hope so, too. Yeah, we wish the best of health of them Thank both. you so much mm -hmm. for your time. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. Morning. <clears throat> 
oral communications. Do we have any? No, there's none. Okay, next item. At fourth consent items, the following are routine and may be acted upon by one motion. Any member of the commission or audience requesting separate consideration may do so by making such request before a motion is proposed. At 4A is approval of the minutes of the commission regular meeting held on March 5th, 2008. Okay, is members had a chance to read the minutes? Yes. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the March 5th, 2008 minutes. Second. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Khan? Yes. Commissioner Rotfogel? Yes. Commissioner Sharkey? Yes. Commissioner Sinanian? Yes. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Okay, let's move on to five. At 5A, uh, it's reports, information only. And I'll, I'll just briefly start off by saying that in, in 2005, we met with the Montrose Merchants Association. They had a request for us to um, upgrade the landscaping to what it was when the park originally opened. And we, we worked with uh, then-citizen Draymond, now Mayor Draymond, um, and his folks um, and, and worked out a plan. But I'll turn this over to Dave and his crew, and they'll, they'll give you the background on the Montrose plan. Mr. Chairman, let's go directly to the project manager, Peter Verheilich. Thank you, President Ward and Commission members. Um, I'm Peter Verheilich. I'm a project manager in our CIP group, and uh, I worked with the Montrose Shopping Park Association to uh, rehabilitate the existing landscape, as George said. Um, we had, uh, it's been a few weeks since I've done this. Maybe I went the wrong way? Or is it fine? Wait. Yeah. There we go. Our uh, project goals were to protect protect the existing trees. The, the trees uh, give a sense of human scale, and there was no need to replace yes. them. Um, we wanted to replace the existing shrubs and ground covers at the site. Uh, they were planted in the uh, late 60s, and a lot of them had been hedged to the point where their structure was severely compromised and they were reaching their effective end, uh, lifespans and so they were being replaced and there was a very uneven look to, to the uh, landscape. Also, over time, uh, plants that had died had been replaced with different species and so the, uh, the palette of the entire shopping park had become very differentiated. Uh, and uh, also, uh, the uh, merchants wanted uh, an increase in the use of annual color um, especially as you're driving through um, to make more of an impact, uh, as well as some annual color on the pedestrian on the sidewalk side of the planters. And the other goal, of course, was to avoid any disruptions that we could um, for the merchants and the patrons. So we worked very hard to do that, and I think we succeeded. Just be slow. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, first off, I'd like to credit uh, the project team. Um, I certainly didn't do this alone. Uh, we worked with, with the Merchants Association, Gary Morello here, and uh, Bill McKinley. Uh, we're also integral, as well as Evan Graves, who is a retired employee that uh, is now with us on an hourly basis. And so I merely managed the project. Um, Evan did the drawings under my direction, and Bill was our day-to-day -day guy on the ground out there supervising the, the, uh, the demolition and the uh, replanting of the site. And Gary, of course, uh, was great to coordinate with. You know, I could always count on him when we had uh, any issues, which really there weren't a lot of issues. I just wanted to pass everything by Gary whenever something came up. Um, next for our schedule, uh, we actually started construction this year in January and, and three months later uh, completed April 8th, actually a few weeks ahead of time. They really moved on this. They, they do good work and they, and they do it quickly and effectively. <coughs> um, the contractor's proposal came in for $154,932 and no change orders and so that's what the project cost. 
see here are the plant palette. Like I said, it was kept fairly simple, manual color, and uh, there was a direction from the shopping park to use a hibiscus, a yellow hibiscus, uh, because it's the Glendale flower, and because it was originally intended to be in the original design and was left out for budget reasons, mm -hmm. and uh, so we've managed to put it in this time. And then we specified a lot of strap-leafed species, especially uh, several varieties of, of dwarf formium and agapanthus, uh, the reasoning being that it's less likely that they'll be sheared or abused. You just pull out the dead leaves, and so um, you know, the, uh, it'll, it'll uh, look better for longer. Also, <clears throat> I found that over time, um, as the flax has grown in a little bit, it's really nice to walk through the shopping park in the morning. The, the light coming through the leaves is just beautiful. It's silhouettes, and the, the formiums have several colors in them. There are greens and yellows and pinks and, and browns and rusts, and, and so it's a really beautiful experience, especially at the beginning and end of the day. What time in the morning? <laughs> oh, no. What time do I have to get up? <laughs> well, I, I'd, I'd like, like to, to see I, it. Typically, we'd, we'd have our meetings at, at about 9 in the morning. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, you should nice to experience huh? that. No, I'll be there. <laughs> and then we kept uh, we kept the foundation shrubs very simple. It was just a, a Raphaelepis ballerina, and we picked that because it's fairly small. And again, so it wouldn't get too big and it wouldn't need shearing. And, uh, and then we just filled in vinca minor around the tree roots because, again, we were trying to preserve the trees. We didn't want to damage the roots. And so where we weren't able to plant all the shrubs we intended, we filled in with vinca minor. And, and so once that grows in, it's complete. And now we just have some photographs of, of the project uh, soon after its completion. I mean, you can see some of the areas that had annual color right there. Um, with begonias, and then the rest of it, you know, predominantly flax with uh, some raphaelepis. Um, but you really need to walk the site to appreciate it. Next slide, please. And just a few more. Um, same thing, annual color, especially at pedestrian crossings and along the areas where the, the low walls um, only leave a, a narrow planter along the street. Those were filled with annual color. And our final slide, uh, again, we did this without uh, major disruptions to the shopkeepers. Uh, got it done early with no change orders. And the shopkeepers really like the work that Parkwood um, Landscape Maintenance Company does, both on the installation and, and the maintenance that they do there. Um, I, I did forget to tell you about the phasing. The reason it went so smoothly was we would take it a block at a time and only do one half, one side and then the other, so that we never had to shut the street down. At, at most, we had to cone off some parking, and so it worked out really well with the merchants. Have any questions? Um, I have one. Uh, the annual color that you're putting in there, um, that's probably the only really labor-intensive um, item. All the others are perennials and stuff are going to stay there. Does the Merchant Society help contribute and have suggestions for the time of changing the annual color? I know that, you know, maybe the Christmas shopping season, they want a certain, you know, color going on or something like that, and, and to be able to program that. Is that three times a year you change out those plants? I, perhaps Gary could align us. But... Uh, <clears throat> Sometimes they'll request poinsettias around Christmas time, and we'll try to get those installed for a three or four week period before they go out. And so it could be up to four times a year, which with the poinsettias being one of the one of the changes. But they don't stay in very long, right. and they leave it kind of up to us to see what's available, what's nicest at that time of the year, what looks the best, and what'll work. Do you have a a, a budget for that shopping center that is supported by the merchants? I mean, for changing out the annual color because there's, you know, a percentage of that that's going to that's gonna be your labor and your cost in the future is going to be those annual bids. Correct. Uh, we probably tripled the cost of that area because of the, the annuals that we put in. And we'll be sending out a new landscape contracting bid, I believe, in a couple of weeks. Okay, so it's so contracted. That should, and that'll, it'll, be, it'll be involved in that, and whatever company bids on bids on all the landscaping in the city that we're going to contract out, that would be part of that. Changing out the beds. Changing out the beds, correct. Okay. Very good. But just to clarify, 
George, the the shopping park does not contribute to any of the cost of that. No. George, when you had um, your discussions with um, Mayor Draymond when he was not on council, because I, I go up there quite a bit, I think it looks very, very nice. I think what you guys did a real good job. But I've always had my eye on that sign that's out there, the Montrose Shopping Park sign. And when, um, how do I say this? When the Civic Auditorium brought in a new sign mm -hmm. and updated their sign, it, it's very exciting, and it went in a very positive direction. Has there been any discussion at all about, you know, the main entry sign to the Montrose Shopping Park, <coughs> about looking at updating that? Um, not with us, Commissioner Khan. Um, they may have had some discussion with the Public Works, you know, because it is it's kind of a shared um, area for us. Public Works takes care of, you know, the, the street trees and, and the lights and that type of thing. Um, but they've had no discussion with us at this point. We're always open to it, I guess. Uh, maybe when Peter meets with them again and, and Dave, we can mention that. But um, right now, given what budget is, I, I'm not sure it's going to be realistic to change out the sign. But um, I, I don't even know if they they want to go in that direction. They yeah, may I don't look know. at that very with a lot of nostalgia. But I'm thinking, though, in terms of I look at the sign that we did at the Civic Auditorium and see how that works. Right. And that, that would be a great thing because they have so many functions up there right. to be able to, to <coughs> advertise it and update it. You know, and it, it's certainly something we can do if they request it. Uh, we can probably work with the BID and GRA and, and, and do something nice up there. Yeah. All right. They, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Khan, the, uh, the Mantra Shopping Park is a business improvement district, and they're supported by the Redevelopment Agency's Economic Development program. So uh, through the redevelopment agency, they provide them with $15,000 annually in economic development support that they're able to use for whatever they choose that uh, within reason that, that benefits the shopping park. So uh, for instance, Kenneth Village uh, used part of that funding to install the clock that they have. And that became part of their entry sign. Um, so they always look at that. And typically, we They'll work with the redevelopment agency, and and of course Montrose is is um, the most substantial uh, BID in the city, and and could um, easily you know address that, S similar to their installation of their clock, uh, mm -hmm. right, which which gave them that kind of thing. So sure. I can certainly pass that along uh, to them when through the redevelopment staff. I'll do that. That'd be great. Absolutely. Yeah, so. and, you know, and when we started this project, it was I think Peter and I. We may have met um, Mr. Draymond out there. We thought we could take some salary savings, some sa savings from our department, and utilize it. Well, by the time we got to, to that point, the project became bigger than what we could provide with our savings. So we did go back to council, and they, they funded the, uh, the entire project. So, sure. Um, at this point, it was all city money. And it really does look great when you're up there. You yeah, it does. Oh, it does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice improvement. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Thank you very much. Nice job, Peter. Thank you. Next item. Restroom facilities. Yeah. Restroom. Restroom facilities report update. And I'll turn this over to Dave Ahern, our CIP administrator. The, thank you. Mr. Chairman, the the update on the restroom renovation project was actually a project that involved several of our parks. Uh, Glorietta, Palanconi, um, Glorietta, Palanconi, New York car park, um, and also in that was the work being done at Dunsmore and at uh, Glen Oaks Park. So as we discussed in our last meeting, the uh, restrooms at Carr, uh, Pelanconi, New York, and Dunsmore or Claret are done. The uh, projects at, at Glen Oaks and Dunsmore have become much larger projects as um, kind of uh, in, in the way when you go to do remodeling at your home. you start with the doorbell and uh, a year later you're replacing the back door on the house. Um, those two star-crossed projects have, have been that way. But we're making real progress and staff uh, has, has really done a good job and they're working with a quality contractor. So we anticipate Glen Oaks will be done in August, the end of August, and 
done some more at uh, some time in October. We're still trying to nail that down. Now, there have been sub substantial change orders associated with that. A lot of um, a lot of wood rot, water damage to the floors that didn't have drains and that were sloped to the walls instead of to the center with a drain. Um, in other areas where the approach to the building, uh, the grade had been altered and had been paved over and when the soil was imported it was simply piled up against the wood cripple wall on the structure so uh, the wood in contact with the with the soil over the years has, has rotted the cripple walls which are the, uh, the 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 wooden stem wall or foundation of the buildings so those have turned into substantial changes uh, which is why these projects have taken longer so those are coming along August and October are our dates for Glen Oaks and, and for Dunsmore. We've been in contact, Gary and I um, have been in contact with the Glen Oaks Homeowners Association regarding that uh, that park. Uh, we've had numerous emails and, and went to their homeowners meeting to discuss it. So those are coming along, but uh, taking a little longer than we would have anticipated. Well, there'll be nice improvements when they're completed. <clears throat> we'll bring you full reports, and uh, in fact, we'll be taking reports to the council soon. And those reports have have photographic documentation of the damage, and and that. So we'll make sure that we send <coughs> copies of that to all of the commissioners as well. And we, we can certainly bring you a PowerPoint on that as well. Okay. Yes. I, I can't remember, but on Car Park, is there going to be a fence along Colorado? Is there. Well, that would be one of the um, the security upgrade recommendations that we're going to go back to council I, with. I know there's graffiti already. Car park on the new restroom. Yeah. 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 I didn't know. I don't know whether that'll help any of the fence, but it might be from the neighborhood. I I don't know. Uh, as part of the security report, I think we were going to recommend fencing and gate so that it, we can close okay. the park at night, mm -hmm. uh, oh, and maybe even close it sooner than 10 o'clock, earlier really? than 10 o'clock. It seems such a shame. It's so beautiful. The graffiti, do, do you have a policy of pretty much painting it out within a certain period of time? Or? Yeah. Uh, if, it's, if it's minor graffiti, Gary's guys go in and, and do it right away. If it's major graffiti, <coughs> our neighborhood services folks go in. They have a graffiti crew, and they'll go in, and they take it out right away. We yeah, don't want to leave it out. Hours Absolutely. Yeah, that, yeah, that helps discourage yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks. Um, mm -hmm. he, since we're, I think it seems like we're maybe talking a little bit about graffiti with this weekend being the paint out, have we submitted a list of problem areas to um, the the um, neighborhood services that maybe they could send some crews out? No, I don't think we have. They usually take our our issues right away, but we are what we're at, what we're doing is is we're going to send them a request for a graffiti paint out of the Riverwalk project. Uh, Dave and I talked about that the other day. There's an area underneath it really does need cleanup underneath the the overpass cleanup and graffiti abatement um, and and it's pretty bad so that's going to be one of the projects we're going to submit for but for this weekend we didn't submit for uh, any graffiti. Mr. Chairman, the the graffiti paint out I think is on the 17th. I don't think 17th. You're right. This weekend you're you're scaring me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> We've got a lot of hot dogs to cook that yeah. day. So. Dave is cooking the hot dogs. Oh, Kiwanis? Oh, really? Kiwanis. Oh, good. Oh, oh. Another group. Yeah. We'll bring my Rotary Club and we'll eat, <laughs> we'll eat your hot dogs. Kiwanis <laughs> does great hot dogs and fries. <laughs> Any other comments? I think we've rolled into th number three already a little bit. Okay. The security. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Park security report update. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, we, we did go to the city council. We had a report... <clears throat> we were having trouble getting our hands around. Uh, there was so much to the report. We thought we'd simplify it and, and just ask for direction from the city council on, on a number of areas. One was park improvements, physical improvements. Two was technology, and the third was um, staffing. Um, the city manager wanted us to, to take the staffing part during the budget discussions because, um, and we can talk about that later on, we have some serious budget issues in, in the city. So we took that part out took out the security part because we we wanted to take an, another look at the numbers in terms of the camera systems and the needs and that those type of things. Um, we weren't able to, to really, MPD wasn't able to get, we weren't able to get our arms around this thing in terms of what it's going to take um, to really monitor the parks and whether or not we even needed these systems given, you know, the 
I'm not sure the parks are in that bad of a shape in terms of crime that we may, you know, that we actually need, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. So um, we now have to go back to the city council and just give them the physical upgrades we we are recommending for the parks, and that would be Brand Park, Car Park, and eight other parks that see more graffiti vandalism. Uh, types of activities um, and some recommendations for physical improvements there, like a fence, like a, a gate, both the gates of car and gates of brand, um, and uh, thinning of the trees, and even maybe some underground conduit for, um, uh, I think it's motion sensor detectors, that type of thing. So we are going back to city council, uh, and I think we're going to go back probably in two weeks. Uh, we've done a lot of work. It was just some of the numbers we had to re-verify before we, we took it back to council. So that's where we're at with the security uh, report. We don't have any money for all those physical upgrades at this point. Right. Um, so we will be asking for money if they want us to, to do the physical upgrades. Uh, I think, you know, Brand seems to be doing okay right now uh, from what we gathered at the community meeting, Brand. Um, they like the, the fact that the guard is out there. Uh, the the uh, closing of the west entrance or, or exit really did help. Um, so things seem to have, have subsided. But we are now going into summer months, and the kids will be out of school, and now we'll really see how that affects the park. Um, having said that, the Americana also opened up, so that attracts the young people as well. So we may not see as many kids at Brand as, as we think we may. So there are a number of factors uh, that we'll be looking at. Does the city <coughs> parks department have a responsibility for the park at the Americana? No, no. That's completely privately it, operated, it's, it's, maintained. It's operated else. through lease agreement uh, with uh, the Caruso affiliates. I know that it <clears throat> it takes uh, you know a lot of play and a lot of expenses to get that camera system in that was demoed for us and shown, and you know whether or not that's going to actually stop activities or just document the activities you know it's it's kind of a it goes in cycles you know, and, in, you know. In, even at camera system we couldn't tell who the kids were um, so if it was you know we, we talked about the the crime deterrent or maybe a vehicle license investigative plate. right um, yeah. you really have to have someone monitor the cameras if you want to be able to watch something uh, and and have the police get out there before it's over or you have an investigative tool but you really have to catch the crime, and and if the resolution's not good, it, I'm not sure it does any good, really. Um, so we're looking at that, and we're grappling with with those type of issues. Um, Just being able to close the parks at sunset or appropriate time, and and have them so that people know that when they're closed, they're closed, right? And, and not having late night activities. And yeah, like and I see two issues. The <coughs> one is when you're open, do parents and and family mm -hmm. when they go to a park, do they feel safe? You know, and then there's the close. When you're closed, there are issues, people jumping the fence and, and going into the park and doing whatever they're going to do, uh, whether it's vandalism, graffiti, <coughs> and some of the other activities. So, um, we have flexed one of my gardeners for the south end of the park, uh, one of my senior gardeners, and he is going around closing all the southern parks, uh, Car Park, Cerritos, uh, this type of stuff, uh, all the way up through. Um, Mayor's Park, which closes at dusk, and Verdugo Adobe, which closes at dusk, yeah. because we're not around at dusk <coughs> now, especially with dusk going at 8 o'clock. Right. So he starts about 8 or so, goes out there, closes those off, make sure that and if he runs into anything, he'll call the rangers, and may, if people won't leave when he asks them to leave or when it's closing. So we've done that right now, and it seemed to have helped a little bit down there with, when at least somebody has, is out there watching the, the, those parks right now. Yeah. And he's closing the restrooms, like I said, and he's, he works till about 10 o'clock or 10.30, and then he goes home. So it's kind of a flexed hours. You know, and the other issue with the cameras, as you know, MacArthur Park, it seemed to work well initially, and then there's right. maintenance issues. You have to replace the cameras. And then they actually had a police substation on the property. Right, right. Yeah, I still think that the best, the best security for a park is having the community use the parks. Mm -hmm. Just having families, having people go there because undesirables don't want to go to a park that's being used by families and recreated. Right. It's it's after hours and it's, you know, something else. But if the community is involved in their parks, goes to their parks, takes possession of those parks, they'll always be in great shape. So 
Yeah, it's more community involvement, Absolutely. supporting them. Yeah. Any other comments from the commission? No, it's security's an issue, but the beautiful parks in Glendale. Keep them that way. Yeah. Okay, next item. It's C Cedar Mini Park update. Sure. Again, I'll, I'll turn this over to Dave Ahern. Sure. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, we're currently working on the design documents. Uh, Lila Batar is the project manager on Cedar along with George Bolterra. Um, we think that we're going to be bringing a report to council in June uh, to go out to bid on the Cedar uh, mini park design. Uh, that would uh, also include the bungalow. Uh, it's, it's not really a restoration. It's um, more of a a rehabilitation to make it functional for park staff to, to use. So uh, staff is currently working with the plant check staff and with the uh, with the design team, uh, PT Associates is the landscape design team. That will go to bid in June. Um, along with that is the uh, Adult Recreation Center, the ARC. Uh, we are ready to get our building permit on that and we'll be bringing a report uh, on that project in June to the council to adopt plans and specifications and go to bid. So two projects ready to go to bid in June. Great. Those are needed. Okay, and let's see our last one, monthly report. Monthly activity reports. And President Ward, uh, members of the commission, I'll go ahead and jump right in here. This is starting off with me in the Recreation and Community Services section. Uh, this this month's report is is rather brief. Um, again, the as you see on every monthly report, our Civic Revenue and our Customer Service Office Revenue report is in here. One of the other items that we've placed in this particular report is a comparison of our registration um, by age, and this is just an opportunity for the staff to take a peek at you know, what age groups are utilizing our, our contract class program. Um, so this is kind of a comparison over the past four years, as you can see. Um, you'll note in the age 5 to 12 category, there was a drop-off in uh, in some particular areas uh, in, in, in class registration, and that is due to the fact that we lost some contract class instructors. So... Mm -hmm. While we collect and compare this information, um, the majority of time that, that you see some fluctuation in the numbers usually is largely um, due to the fact that whatever classes we are offering during a particular season will, will affect our number of registrants. But we do keep uh, a pretty nice consistent numbers in terms of the age groups that we're providing classes for and the number of uh, participants in our programs. So that's very good news to us. Um, and we do have a large percentage base of return participants. So we just continue to kind of take a look and analyze the numbers in different ways. In some other reports, you see it by the number of participants, uh, new registrants versus current registrants. In this particular one, it's via age category. So um, if you have any questions at this time, I'm happy to um, answer those. But this month's report's rather brief. Any comments? Mm -hmm. Thank you for the leisure guide. Absolutely. <laughs> We'll be re ready for the summer and all the programs as soon as the weather spikes again back up into the 80s and 90s. Yeah, and since you mentioned it, I should yes. let the folks at home know that it is up on our website as well. So if they don't get a copy in their mailbox, they can visit our website and view a copy at their leisure. Very good. Okay, next report. Okay, next report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, briefly, we've covered a number of the projects that we're working on already. One that we haven't touched on is the Shaw Canyon ball fields. Mm -hmm. um, that project is is quickly coming to completion and will be um, completed at the end of May. And uh, that's another project that uh, began as a much smaller project. And then as, as work began, uh, our project manager, Shahan, along with working with Gary mm -hmm. uh, Morello um, and his crews, um, really um, worked uh, to find ways to, to bring that project in. Um, they began to replace lights and found that the conduits were bad. We began to replace sprinklers and found that the lateral feeds were bad. And so much like home remodeling, uh, 
once again. Like the restroom um, project. Huh? But <laughs> the project grew, um, and it's because we have talented staff, mm -hmm. frankly. Gary and his people, Shahan, and all the staff in the in the CIP group, um, just really dedicated, talented people that really take these projects on just as if they were working on their own home, watching the money closely and negotiating uh, with the contractors to, to uh, come forward with the best deal for the city and see those details um, that make that park just a little bit better. Uh, all the extra touches that you'd want in something that you owned yourself. So I think Shoal is, is the key one that's coming in. There's a couple of other things that we're working on uh, with other staff in the department. Um, we had a hike um, last last month. Uh, maybe two weeks ago? Two was weeks two ago. Weeks I guess that was last month. Commissioner <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sharkey uh, was there at the hike, and I think we got information out to all the commissioners on it. Yes. And um, our trails management uh, person um, worked on that al along with one of the other project managers. And so they're working uh, together to to uh, schedule a couple of more and hopefully a camping trip as well. Uh, so as soon as we have firm dates on those, it looks like the end of May, start of June, we'll get that out to you and out to the community. So um, that's not your typical CIP project, but it's something that uh, everybody's excited about. And one of those things that staff recognizes that uh, it's the kind of thing that we should all care about and, and all get involved in and, and find a way to make it happen. So staff is working on that. Um, and then the last thing um, to show you that we're really paying attention, Commissioner Khan, the Green Building Design Seminar, um, we looked into that. Turns out Water and Power has a contract with uh, a firm that does this, and so we're working with them trying to find a date and a time where we can put on an in-house seminar for staff from many departments um, to get the building department, the planning department, Water and Power, our staff, uh, and put on a, a green building design one-on-one -on -one for city staff and commissioners. And so as we uh, get a little closer on that, get that nailed down, we'll get the date out to each of you as well. So um, get that set up. Right. Build on that. So we're listening. Good. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Last. This is my turn. Yeah, I have a few slides, but before I do that, I'd like to mention one item that worked out very well. I met with the uh, Homeowners Association over at Windsor Mini Park area mm -hmm. in Windsor Manor. Uh, very nice people, all of them. Uh, a police officer and I both went over there for about two and a half hours for their, one of their meetings, and <coughs> the park is right across the street from that manor area. And there is one lady who, uh, Ann Howell, who is very nice. She always calls when there's good or bad things going on, but there's been a, quite a bit of bad going on because of the um, they, there's been a group of people coming there um, in, in their 20s or so that have been using the park and then when the lights go off in the park they come over to Windsor Mini Park and use their lawn to play their music and that type of stuff so um, the police officer was going to do what he could do and I offered to send uh, a ranger by about uh, once a night for about a two week period well it only took one night I had Eric Grossman, one of our rangers, go by, and um, they arrested two people, I believe. They brought uh, several citations to several people, and uh, she called me the next day, and they haven't been back. So just by sending the ranger by with with his vehicle, he went by uh, three times that night. And now that they know that he's going by, it, uh, it worked out quite well, and they're quite happy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a problem we haven't been able to take care of because there's not enough manpower usually but uh, I committed Eric for a couple of hours uh, on his nights that he works and um, he's done a real good cleanup job actually it, it, it I don't know if it, where they where they go or where, what's what's uh, what's going on with them she says they stop by about eight o'clock at night so they call and then a car comes by picks them up and they leave so it's uh, just wanted to mention that the Ranger even though it's uh, low, lowly staffed right now, it's quite effective. So I'm going to let you guys know that. And I have a few pictures. <clears throat> Just 
just a couple. That uh, this is a project that was done at the ARC. Uh, we didn't want to do this necessarily, but we realized that it was required. Uh, even though the ARC is going to go out, uh, the air conditioning and the heating were uh, abysmal. Uh, they just couldn't work in that in that building. So Raymond Wong, the building repair supervisor, my, one of my managers, uh, bought two large air conditioners that can be used somewhere else when ARC does go does go under construction, and we can put them somewhere else. But we had to go through all the new ducting and all the new areas on the on that roof to to complete it. And uh, the building repairmen that worked on this job did an outstanding job. It looks like it's was newly installed. I mean, it looks like it was a new installation from with, with the new building. They did. They worked hard. They did a good job. Uh, they worked about a uh, two-week period, and they craned in the, the new, the new uh, refrigeration units and craned out the old ones, got rid of them. And again, like I said, we'll, we'll be keeping the new ones when the building goes down, when it goes under construction. And there's pretty much what, from zero to that, uh, in about two-week period, uh, two basic individuals did that for about a two-week period. And then one of the new units there. Then we have uh, Windsor Mini Park. <laughs> Just as I was uh, stating before, we had graffiti there. Uh, do some cleanup. You can see on the right the graffiti. Then after the cleanup, the wall and sidewalk are clean. Again, we got it on the on the pillars. And then on this one here, you can see the pillars are clean. More on the sidewalk down there. Uh, and then we decided to do it. We did all. We steam cleaned the whole entire sidewalk on both sides. Then after we cleaned off the graffiti. And we try to get there. We have got a couple steam cleaners for this for my department for that very reason, so we don't have to wait or go rent one. So we can get out there a lot faster, and they do a really good job. Uh, Keeps the gum off the walkways and everything. Gum and markings and any kind of you know tire marks or bike marks or anything like that takes everything off. So mm -hmm. that's it. Mm, very nice. I know it looks a lot better when you do a, a cleanup like that once in a while, like the entrances to buildings and stuff. And uh, a lot of storefronts don't know that it doesn't take a whole lot to get all that cleaned off, but it sure does look nice and appealing, especially at our smaller parks. Okay, let's see. Uh, commission staff comments? We have some? Yeah. Sure. Uh, a couple things. First of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Ahern for doing the research to look into the, the green building issues. It's kind of interesting. I, I'm not a huge, uh, I, well, I'm, I'm trying to learn about it. I don't have a deep background in it. And I've mentioned it a couple times, and I've actually had people uh, calling me, asking me certain information, like I have some expertise to it. I have absolutely none whatsoever. So it's going to be good to learn about it. Um, the second thing was, as I did mention, and, and this was the chairman brought in, which is very nice, is um, it, it related to drought-tolerant plants and different plant material. And Chairman Ward brought this in, and it's a gardening guide. And what's nice about it is it's, it's, it's on a disc, but what is always helpful for me is that you can tell me the names and the species of plants and trees, and I don't have a clue as to what that looks like. But if you show me a picture of it, I can kind of relate a little bit like, yeah, that's in my yard. So I understand that. Um, so hopefully this will be very helpful. I think that's great. And I just wanted to thank him for bringing that in. Yeah. And those are my comments. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes. Just a question, I guess, for the next meeting, if we were going to be meeting in July. We talked about a little, little bit about that in before the meeting, but I was wondering if this year we were going to have a July meeting. Well, the June meeting, we can figure. Yeah, we still do have the June meeting. Right. And if you want to go dark in July, if people are on vacation, we certainly can do that. Well, let's, let's, it's, uh, Fourth of July is on a Friday, and our meeting would be that Monday prior, right. I mean, that Wednesday prior. So let's maybe in June know what the agenda might be, and okay. that would be possible. I the, believe. the only other comment I'd like to add to that is normally July is Parks and Recreation Month, so. Ooh. <laughs> there may be an opportunity there to share some information with I know you. I'm in town, and I believe that. Yeah. I, I know I'm out, but 
it doesn't. Yeah, Wolf. We'll I think by next meeting we'll have a better handle on it. Okay. As yes, I know that this next month is uh, Women's Golf Month, so. Um, That's important. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. It's on my calendar. Yes. Um, I just thought it had a few comments. I did go on that hike. I highly recommend it. Uh, both Jeff and John gave presentations that were short with so much information, and then we toured, and they had everything listed, the, all the plants as we went along, and it was just so informative, so much so that I went back the next day with my husband, and he was snapping pictures all over. It was just beautiful. So. I, I, I highly recommend the next hike if you can possibly go. The other thing I went to that was so much fun, luckiest people that night in Glendale was at the Civic Auditorium Club Maple. Pam Cook and her staff did a mm -hmm. and volunteers. Uh, the entertainment, the Hawaiian dancers, the food, uh, and everyone was having such a good time. So um, I just wanted to thank Pam and her staff and volunteers for all the work they put into it. It really showed. So. Very good. George, did you want to speak well, I, I have the some things. I, I do have some things, but I think Brittany has a couple of announcements first. Mm -hmm. Well, I just wanted to highlight a couple of uh, really neat activities that are coming up for the month of mm -hmm. May. It's, it should calendar should be a part of your packet. Um, but uh, this week, actually, we had two Mother's Day celebrations taking place. There was one today, but there's another one uh, tomorrow at the Adult Recreation Center from 10 to 1. Uh, they're having a Mother's Day lunch in there, so if, uh, please come out and join us. And this is from mothers, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers. Um, <coughs> then, just to highlight some other th things that are going on, we have a senior excursion to the Ronald Reagan Museum and Library that's coming up uh, next Tuesday on the 13th. Uh, and also I want to highlight uh, a really neat program that the Spar Heights Community Center is doing, and this is open to the general community. It is called the Community Book and Music Exchange. It will be held on Tuesday, May 20th. Uh, what they do is the week prior to the actual event on the 20th, uh, com the community can come in with their books and music and um, kind of donate it to the event, and in exchange for that, they get what they call spar bucks, which are basically like credits, mm -hmm. so that when you come back on the 20th, you can use your spar bucks to buy other used books and music CDs. I believe they do DVDs as well, so it's really kind of a neat something. So uh, a little bit of a swap meet, but you pay via your donation, so it's kind of a neat program that we have out there. And then the other nice highlight for the month is on Thursday, May 27th, is our 90-plus birthday celebration. Right. Uh, that'll be held at the Adult Recreation Center, and that is to celebrate those seniors who are 90 years of age and older. So uh, if you do have anyone out there that you would like to honor at that luncheon, please contact our folks at the Adult Recreation Center, and their telephone number is 548-3775. So lots of neat things happening this month. Good. I went to that event last year, and it's pretty special. Very nice. I'll go again. <laughs> it's on my calendar. I'll see Is if it? I can make oh, it. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, that, I have a few things, uh, yes. President Ward. Um, one is I had an idea as you were talking about the Green Building, uh, Commissioner Khan, is maybe we open that up to more members of the community uh, or ask Phil or someone to help sponsor that, if that's an interest in Sure. community. I mean, sure. that would benefit Glendale as well if, if the buildings were green. Um, brand beautification, I don't know if you all noticed. Um, Gary and um, I think Peter also worked on that. Did Peter work on that? And Bill McKinley and our contractors. Mm. If you take a look at brand and all the entry points in the city, anywhere there's a medium, medium we really beautified it. And, and uh, it, it really pops at this point, so it looks really nice if you haven't noticed. And I know it's hard to notice because of the, the grand scale of the Americana, but um, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, our guys did a good job on it. Well, we'll uh, get used to it, and then we'll just... <laughs> right, right. Um, good news, uh, Hagop Kasavian had a baby girl, so there's oh. an addition to our, our Parks and Rex family. Um, healthy baby girl, so um, we're proud of that. Oh, nice. And then... Some of the other issues that you should know about staffing, we're a little short on staffing, as you know. Uh, we're not quite sure when our, our staff assistant's going to be back, if at all. 
Um, I have uh, an email to our, our HR director. I really want to find out what's going on since it's been almost a year. Um, and then we're down several other staff members. Uh, we are filling two positions, staff assistant positions, soon. Um, but if you notice things are a little different, we're short on staff, not just here but with the Arts Commission as well. Um, and then finally, budget. We work. We are now working on potential 5%, 7.5%, and 10% budget cuts scenarios. Um, we're not sure what level it will be, if any, but uh, we were asked to go through that exercise. For next fiscal year? For the next fiscal year, yes. Um, the budget projections project a deficit next fiscal year, uh, and there's varying numbers, um, and that's why we're working through the 5% to 10% scenarios. We're going to try to try to not to impact uh, the department as, mu as much as we can. Uh, we're, we're working with part-time vac and vacancies right now. So if there are vacancies in, in the uh, department, throughout citywide anyway, you really have to justify filling that position or else what we're going to end up holding it uh, to help with the budget situation. Um, but at the third level, it will require potential <laughs> program cuts. Uh, that's when it really hits the hits the bone kind of thing. Uh, so just so you know, we're, we're working through those issues. And it's hard for everybody. Um, even though we're a big department, it's probably harder for some of the smaller departments because that usually is man hours for them. So are you letting you know? When do you, what do you, you work that out and then you submit it and what's your timing on all of this? Well, we're going to be meeting this Thursday, actually tomorrow, I think. Um, we have two meetings with uh, the city manager's office and finance and all of us. Um, May 14th, May 21st. Um, and we'll, we'll work through those scenarios out. Last time, two years ago, I think, we, we all met at the police community room and everyone threw out their cuts and, and you know, we worked uh, on huge tables on the screen. And that's what will happen, probably. Um, so by by May 21st, I think we should have something. If not May 14th, I'm not sure. It just depends on what type of work the other departments have put in. We've done our work. Uh, we think we've got something that's workable. And we'll see. In the fiscal year, July? July 1, yeah. So Good luck. Let it keep us informed. Doom and doom kind of, not sure. that bad, but yeah. it is going to impact us. And we're looking at potential... Uh, re revenue enhancements, and it may be that uh, we may have to move a couple of gardeners over to the enterprise fund, maybe charge some of the user groups a couple of bucks an hour. They may not be happy, but that may be one way to keep the maintenance level uh, at its current standard. Yeah, at least you want to try to get cost recovery at right. your operations. Right. Yeah. Any comments on George, I know that I think it was two council meetings ago, possibly, they were talking about with the Civic giving um, nonprofits uh, a discount, and I know that's at the council level, but isn't that counterintuitive as far as you know cutting our budget and then you know giving more away? Well, the, the good thing is that was out of our enterprise fund; it wasn't out of general fund. Um, you know, and we, but we are we do need to keep a healthy enterprise fund reserve. Um, so it does impact us. We were able to give that group 25%, a 25% discount. Um, but I'm not sure I, I foresee that coming up again. Yeah, I think it looked pretty painful when, when they did it that night. Um, and I think the group was hoping for a lot bigger discount than they got. So was it just for that one group? or It was for that group for that night. Uh, we may have other requests as they come by. We usually work with them and give them discounts as much as we can. Um, you know, they may choose to go to the council. I don't know. At some point, I think they may want to report on the type of activi activity we have at our enterprise account um, facilities, like um, the Civic. And we may end up discussing that next Tuesday when we talk about enterprise funds. Um, and they may want to establish a policy of giving all nonprofits who serve the community a certain percentage off. Uh, but we'll, we'll bring that back to them with some recommendations. Other comments? Okay. Okay. Um, any written communications? Okay. Looks like um, we're adjourning early at 4 o'clock. Wow. Get a motion. Oh, a motion to adjourn. Moved.
Okay. Okay. We're close.